Welcome, super smarties. Let the learning begin. Ta-da! It's Friday. We've waited all week to achieve this goal. So let's take a temperature check. If you don't have a signal, just check in with something around you that is one of our zone colors. Now today is Friday. I feel a little blue because I don't see my students virtually. Fridays used to be our fun day. It was the day we survived the week. Thursdays are like the longest day of the week. It feels like all the work of Friday, but there's one more school day to learn. So I'm a little in the blue zone. So today I especially need to make a mind shift. So what we're going to do today is a strategy called birthday. Happy birthday. Cake and candle. Cake and candle. As if we're celebrating a happy birthday. It's not my birthday. My birthday's in September. I'd be a TK. I would have been a TK baby 100 million years ago when I rode my dinosaur to school. So let me explain how birthday cake and candle birthday works. So our birthday mind shift is this. You imagine having a cake and you smell the birthday cake. So your inhale is taking in all the fabulous of the birthday. And your exhale is blowing out the candle. So inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale is cake. Exhale is candle. Now you don't need an actual cake. <laughs> well, you do need an actual cake. It smells fantastic. Lemon is my favorite. And I love my birthday. It's my favorite holiday because it's why I was made law to be given away, to be a teacher. My greatness in life is getting other people to theirs. And why not have cake to celebrate? Now, I'm not real crazy about the frosting. I like naked cake. Not eating cake naked. There is no naked in kindergarten or school or public, for that matter. But cake without icing, it just tastes better. But ah, lemon smells fantastic. And the candle? Now I basically need a fire hose. I have so many candles on my cake. But the idea is that you get the mind shift. Even without a cake, you just imagine birthday cake, lemon for me, maybe chocolate for you, vanilla, strawberry, whatever flavor you like. And then birthday candle, cake, candle, cake, candle. That'll take you right out of the blue zone. Put you right in the green so that you're regulated and ready to learn. All right, let's attack the calendar. Not literally attack it, I mean figuratively with our brain and our writing hands. Okay, so yesterday was Thursday. I can get that information out of my own smart brain, drawing on my schema, and or I can either check for it or confirm it on a smart card and our smart chart and also on the calendar itself. So first I'm going to give myself a face space. This is going to be lace the face space. Okay, so lace, let's take the seven away. We're one more than seven. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho. Yesterday was siete de mayo. Today is ocho de mayo. I'm gonna be out once we hit 10. Ocho. Five dash eight dash 20. And today is not Thursday. Yesterday was T-H-U-R-S-D-A-Y. And there's a period just because it's a telling sentence. Let's erase Thursday from our memory. All right, just the board. I was just kidding. So if yesterday was Thursday using our smart cards, what do you expect today to be? Drum roll, please. Sounds like my dog's tail or her foot. Pum, 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 pum. Should be. Durr. 
Fucker Art Day Friday. Friday, because you're usually fried. So that's a good mnemonic, but it's not F R Y, it's F R I. Like it sounds, not like what it's spelled. F R Y. Why does Y do that? Can't decide if it's consonant or vowel. But in this word, it is I, like I. Okay, today is capital F R I. D-A-Y, and then a period, it's in the present. And tomorrow will be a week and Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So let's erase that Friday, my handy dandy finger eraser. Sat, S-A-T-R-U-R, day, D-A-Y, and a period, and that's in the future. Today is face space, thank you, Lace. F R I D A Y, still May. And it's Ocho, Ocho de Mayo, the eighth day of May. Now, let's look at our little mini lesson here. We were looking at equal value and equal size. This isn't looking at size, but it is looking at value, but it's looking at it a different way. It's looking at representation of number and whether it's equal or unequal. So it's still using the same symbols of equal, the same, and unequal, different, not the same. But what we're going to have to determine is whether these represent the representation is the same as equal. Okay, so here I see what looks like a dice. One, two, three, four, five. So I see five dots on the left and on the right, I see the numeral of five. If I write this numeral and I make this many dots, is that equal? I know they're not exactly the same. One is a number and one is a picture, a representation of it. But are they equal or unequal? Five, five. They're the same, so we would say they are equal. Let's go to the right. Here I see a frame. It's a structure that we use in math called a, do you remember what it's called? There are some boxes in a frame. There are 10 of them. It's a tens frame. Now, in this tens frame, I see a little dot. It's very small, but I see a dot in all 10 of the frames. So here I see, here I saw five dots and the number five. And so we said that those were equal. And it's just easier to use color as well, because sometimes our brain, when it sees it in all the same color, when our eyes tell our brain that it's all in the same color, it doesn't differentiate the same. It doesn't see the differences. And I want you to see the differences. So here, when we counted, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When I look at it, the entire frame is full. So the last number I stated is a total in all, and that's ten. Now over here I see F-I-V-E. F-I-V-E, that spells five. F-I-V-E, F-I-V-E. That spells five. F-I-V-E, that spells five. F-I-V-E spells five. So I said five. I saw five here and I saw five there. Do you see five there? Is it equal or unequal? Here we said 10 and here we said five. 10, five. Are those the same words? No, because they don't represent the same numbers, because they don't represent the same value in those squares. So is it equal or unequal? We would say that it is unequal, not equal. The equal sign with a line through it, that's the no. This is not equal. Let's sweep back and go under what we worked on at the beginning. So we went from left to right, we're sweeping back to the left, and we're working across. So here I see some tallies. 
It's not the number 11, it's actually tallies. It's tallies and tallies. I know because I'm the one who programmed the board. So I'm telling you, it's not 11 and some tallies. It's not 11 and 1,111, because you see there's no comma. They're both tallies. So here I said 11, and here I see, no, here I did not say 11. Now I'm getting confused. Here I said it's tally, so it's one, two, not 11. It is not 11. What am I doing? I'm awake, so I'm making a mistake. It's to be expected, inspected, and respected. Got to pay more attention, right? Sorry, I got distracted. And this is also a set of tallies, so let's count them. One, two, three, four. Down and over right, down some more. That makes four. Two and four. Are two and four the same, or are they different? Yeah, they're different. So are they equal or unequal? Unequal. They are not the same. Now let's look at the last one that's represented here. Here I see a hand. All of the fingers and the thumb are up. And on the other hand, I see only one lace is joining them. So here's five and one more. Five in our head and count on. Five, six. So the total number there represented is six using fingers. And this is tallies. One, two, th oh, let's do it this way. One, two, three, four up and down, make one across and then no more. Everybody jive, look alive. A set of tallies is made of five. So here are five and one more. So five and one more is a total of six. Would we say that those are equal or unequal? They're equal. They are the same. I said the same thing two times, six, six, exactly the same. Now how you can stretch out this learning is by making cards, little flashcards, turn them sideways, and then program them with all different ways to represent number. And maybe what you want to do is you want to program them with zero on the first one, so it's empty. And then you want to write the word zero, Z-E-R-O, and then make zero, the numeral, and then go to one, O-N-E, make one, make, 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 make one dot, make one finger, make one tally, make the word one, put a picture of like one dinosaur, then go to two and do the same thing. Do tens frames and five frames and tallies and fingers and dots and scattered configuration where you put them randomly around on the card. And then you will turn them over and use an also making a card that says equal and unequal, you will say whether they're equal or unequal. And then you can also match them for like a concentration matching game. But this will stretch out the learning. You can do that by yourself or you can have someone else help you. All righty. Make sure that you have transferred this into your handy dandy composition book. And your goal is to read and read and read and write and write and write. And then transfer this onto some other learning as well. All right, friends. I'm going to take the portable calendar down. Bye-bye, portable calendar. See you again tomorrow. Let me fill up our schema with some new things. Meanwhile, back at the board, we're about to board the bus and go on a learning field trip. Climb on the bus. Honk, honk, beep, beep. Time to build up our schema. Time for a brain bite, a brain snack. Oh, a schema snack. A little micro lesson. Shh, bah. oh wait, that's shh, bah. shh. Doors are opening. Get on. Robinson's rabbits are ready to go. Ready to roll. All right, let's rock and roll, little troll. 
we are looking at beginning sounds. Remember the little mnemonic we used was super teacher laying down on the job. So her head represents the beginning, her tummy or her belly or her belt represents the middle, and her fantastic feet represent the end. So green for the bows, yellow for the buckle on the belt, red for the shoes. If it's the beginning sound, we break it off. If it's the middle sound, we stretch it out. And if it's the ending sound, we punch it. Kick that ending sound. <laughs> Using all your superpowers. All right, so still we're working on beginning sounds because that is a critical standard for early learners. The tiny little people have to be able to hear phonemic awareness, isolate, reproduce the sound, and, oh, there's so much work here, replicate the symbol that represents that sound. That's phonics. So this is really, really big work. Later, when you go to first grade and second grade and third grade, you're going to isolate the middle and the ending more frequently than the beginning. We're going to do a lot of work with beginning sounds and a lot of work with ending sounds for little people. And then we're going to do some with the middle sounds, predominantly in CVC words, consonant, vowel, consonant words. And as you get to the bigger grades, you're going to isolate parts of words. So the beginning of a prefix and the ending of a prefix, which is the breaking up the big part, the beginning part of a really big word, the suffix, the ending sounds, but not just the last ending sound, but breaking off a piece of that ending sound and doing the beginning and the ending of that ending sound. It sounds so confusing. But what this is is called scaffolding. So we are down at the lower part of the landing on the stairs and we have to be able to master and understand everything across that staircase before we climb up to the next grade and we do some new things on their landing. But all this work is going to inform our work later. So what's most important is that you have a growth mindset to never ever give up. And remember that the key to mastery is effort. Sometimes it feels like I don't really understand it and it's so hard. If it's hard, you're learning. If it isn't hard, you're just practicing. And sometimes it feels like very monotonous. Like we just do it again and again and again. The reason we do it again and again and again is because our goal is automaticity. Fast as a snap, fast as a blink, fast fast as a snap, oh, I got it wrong, fast as a snap, fast as a clap, fast as a blink, that's how fast that I can think, whew, that fell out of automaticity for a minute, again, another mistake, I must be really, really wide awake today, huh, all right, so what we're looking for in our smart brain, and using our support strip at the bottom of our board, is which letter belongs on which, on which line, so we're going to use our phonemic awareness, our listening for the beginning sound, our breaking it off, and then we're gonna attach that to a specific symbol that belongs at the beginning of each word to complete the whole word. So we're marrying dun, 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 phonemic awareness, the listening, to phonics, the writing, the looking, the listening, the looking, and the writing of the letter. So here I see some rebus pictures, and I see some blank lines, and I see the ending sound of all the words. So what we're going to change is what's called the onset, the first sound or the beginning sound for each of the words. And down here at the bottom, I see the letter S, S and Z. The letter C, Steeler C, says K and S. The letter F says F and V. The letter U says A. Uh, U, U, U. The letter G says G and J. The letter K only makes one sound, K. And Steeler C steals that sound whenever he can. The letter H, ha, ha, ha. But you're on your speech motor, ha. Just a breath sound, the speech motor is completely off. And the letter B. And we know B is very, very bad. He will not face his dad. I don't want to look at you. And baby B lives in the mommy's tummy. That's how we know which direction it's going to face.
B says B. Don't say B, say B. B. All right, now we have the sounds. Here's a picture of a hat, and what we have is the at. Here's a picture of a sun, and what we have is the un. Here's a picture of a kite, and what we have is the ite. Here's a picture of a fish, and what we have is the ish. Here's a picture of a cup, and what we have is the up. Here's a picture of a girl, and what we have is the earl. Here's a picture of a ball, and what we have is the all. Here's a picture of an umbrella, and what we have is the umbrella. And then we have our letters. So we've broken off the beginning sound, and we have to put it back in. Oh my gosh! Fix it, mix it, can we fix it? It's broken. Let's get our hammers like Fix It Felix. I can fix it, ching! We have to add the missing letter so we can fix the broken words. Hat. We have the at. We need the ha, 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 at, hat. Which of these letters says ha, ha, ha? If you said H, you are correct. Let's kiss goodbye. And let's put the at hat. Here's a picture of a sun. S un sun. S s s. Which of these letters says s? Uh, g, k, b. It was the first one. S. And S is difficult to make, so make sure you watch. Starting point up, curve around left, sliding down right, curve up around left to the stopping place. S, un, sun. Here's a picture of a kite. Now two of the letters say k, but one of them, that's the only sound it makes. And this word uses the authentic, the original k. So think about who the stealer is. This word does not use the stealer letter. It uses the sound the k steals, but doesn't use the stealer letter. So we're listening for k. Listen. K, s, f, a, g, k, b. Which one? It could be this first one or this sixth one. Which one is it? Do, 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 do. It's not the stealer, so it cannot be the C. It has to be what? Letter K. So we're going to cross out the K. Kiss it goodbye. K. Eight. Kite. Now we have a fish. F ish. F ish. Fish. K. Eight. That was a K. F ish. F. K. F. A. G. B. Which one? The third letter. The F. Starting point up, curve around left, pull straight down, cross right in the middle. F. Ish. Fish. Here we have a cup. Now we've already used the K, so we know it's not a K. It is using stealer. Who steals K sound? It's letter C. C steals K sound. K -a -g -b. It's letter C. The second letter. K up. Cup. Now we have U, G, and B. This is a girl. G. Earl, g, g, g. Which letter says g? Letter G. This is a U, this is a G, this is a B. So is it the first, second, or third letter? The second one that I said. And remember, G is like A. Up, around, up, down, and then it goes into the basement. This is a drop-down letter. It goes down into the basement, curves up, around left to the stopping place and it says g and j like giraffe and guitar. Now I only have two letters left. This is a ball. B all b all b b b. Which letter says b? Is it a u or a b? The first one 
or the second one I said? Is it in the middle of the support strip or is it at the end of the support strip? It's at the end. Now remember when we make B, we start at the top and pull straight down, go back up to the middle and curve around right and in at the bottom. So B is down, up and around. D is around, up and down. B is down, up and around. D is around, up and down. Which means we only have one left. Process of elimination. I don't even have to break it off, but I'm going to. Umbrella. Uh, umbrella. Uh, uh, uh. Could be an A, but it's not like A and around. It, or an or a U, right? But it's the first sound. It is the sound of umbrella. This is how you sign umbrella. Uh. Curve up, down, and around. He's little and he'll fall over, so he needs a little leg to stick back, to kick out, to lean on. All right, let's read our words. H at, hat. S, un, sun. K, ite, kite. F, ish, fish. K, up, cup. G, earl, girl. B, all, ball. Uh, umbrella, umbrella. Nicely done. Let's cop the parts in these words and add that. Hat. Hat. One syllable. I'm going to put one S. Sun. 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 One syllable. Kite. Kite. Now, although you see two vowels, E is silent, getting all of its power over the I, making it long and strong and saying its name. Often, the vowels indicate how many syllables. So if you count the vowels, you can presume that there are that many syllables, but you can never assume. You have to chin check it or clap it and or clap it. There's only one S, one syllable in this. Fish. This has a digraph at the end, but it only has one vowel. Fish. Only one syllable. Cup. Cup. Only one syllable. Girl. Girl. Only one syllable. Ball. Ball. Only one syllable. When we do math, algebra, you're going to use symbols. So I like to jump that back into this when we're working on language arts when we're little people because it gets our brain ready to hold those symbols later for the big math when you have to be a super math magician to be a mathematician. All right, here's, I don't think it's one syllable, umbrella. 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 It's a three syllable. And if you look, there's a U, an E, and an A. So there are three vowels. And in this word, the presumption, I presume there are going to be three syllables, was accurate. But you can never, ever assume. Don't make an assumption. Because in kite, there were two vowels and only one syllable. That was fantastic work. Now before you go, I would like us to review our high frequency words in red and orange. Next week, we're going to add two more strands. Ready? We're gonna end on this, so er, ready for the breaks on there. I and the is we to my can it a uh, see a uh, like and one of the things I want you to try and do is write these in salt and sand with paintbrush ah, and water on your sidewalk. You can make them with glitter glue and sprinkle some glitter and then you can touch them. You could even cut out sandpaper and touch them. Then you can feel it's very kinesthetic. And then try using them in sentences. Say them, write them, read them. The goal with these is to really get these high frequency words into automaticity. Fast as a snap, fast as a clap, fast as a blink. That's how fast that I want you to think because you're going to see these words again and again and again in what you read and you're going to make them again and again and again in what you write. 
So these are super important, super power smarty words are the ones that we need to know immediately because we use them so frequently. Hey, that was so fun. So fun, Smarties. I don't know where my Smarty chart went. Ah, here it is. I guess I'm going to say goodbye now. Goodbye, Super Smarties. Catch some pride. Put it inside. I've shared enough schema. I'm not dumping. No, I'm not dumping any more out. You have to get some more on another video. Come back ready to learn. All right, come back ready to learn and I'll share some more stuff. I've got to go build up my schema so I can dump some more out. You can put in your smart brain. Here's some love. You can have that for later. Enjoy Ocho de Mayo. I will see you mañana. Hasta la vista, super teacher.